little bit about some of the smaller structures within the smaller structures within the kidney. So we're kind of zooming all the way down. There's really, I think there's three way, three levels to think of the kidney. There's the entire gross anatomy perspective, which is like you took a kidney and you cut it in a frontal section, just like you see here. And then you can take a single renal pyramid. And since the kidney is just a group of renal pyramids and the cortex above it, up here, from here to here, again, remember, is the cortex. So there's the renal pyramid here, and then the cortex slice on top. Uh, this is another really good perspective. From this perspective, you can see the individual nephrons more clearly in the collecting duct through the center. And then you can go even closer to the third and final zoomed in appearance, which is looking at capillary bed levels. Um, and so that's what we're doing in this video. That's why it's called the microscopic anatomy is because it's really impossible to see these details without something like a microscope. So if you look at this region of the sheet, we're gonna move from where it says video four, that's the video we're recording now, down to video five right here, or it will be the next video when you're watching this. So all the way from renal corpuscle down to collecting duct. And if you look at this, the three terms that are least indented are kind of our three basic categories, the renal corpuscle, the renal tubule, and then a collecting duct. And so all of these things, if we go back to this perspective, you can kind of break down this thing into those three categories. The renal corpuscle, so sometimes you're gonna point at these little circles and you're gonna say glomerulus. Even in the previous videos, when these were super duper small, I said that's where the glomerulus is. And the reason you might interchange the term corpuscle and glomerulus is that the glomerulus is really the, the more important structure but technically speaking, corpuscle and glomerulus are not the same thing. Renal corpuscle is this is a more general term. That's why it's not indented here. The renal corpuscle is made of these terms or these structures here. These are all components of the renal corpuscle. So I remember when I was studying this for the first time, I think for many weeks, in my mind, a renal corpuscle and a glomerulus were the same thing, but they're technically not. So, for example, when we go down to this picture, this is a basically a renal corpuscle, corpuscle model. Within that, you can see the glomerulus, and the glomerulus is simply a capillary bed. It's a special capillary bed, but it's a capillary bed. And so that's an important distinction to make. So, looking at the renal corpuscle model, we're going to go over these six terms here. The glomerulus, again, when you hear that term, you should think specialized capillary bed in the kidney. It is, again, simply a capillary bed, meaning that it has a muscle-covered arterial leading to a very thin-walled capillary bed, which then leads to the thing that drains it out. In this case, these have specialized names, um, which we'll go over in the next video, but really we're breaking down, this is the glomerulus right here. Number seven here is not the glomerulus, and number six here is not the glomerulus. The glomerulus picks up as this capillary, or this blood flow moves into this big circular thing. So what the heck is the big circular thing? Well, the big circular thing is the glomerular capsule, also known as Bowman's capsule. So that is what is encapsulating the glomerulus or the capillary bed. So again, Bowman's capsule, also known as glomerular capsule, is not the same thing as the glomerulus. Um, when you look at the Bowman's capsule itself, it actually breaks into two layers. One layer that's very easy to see in the model, and that's the parietal layer. So this Bowman's capsule is actually a slightly more general term because the Bowman's capsule can be broken into a parietal layer, which I'm putting my mouse over now. Easier to see, it's simple squamous epithelium. And then if you look at the bottom of the model, there's also a visceral layer, which is what is made up of what are called podocytes, which are in this sort of egg yellow down here. So you might be thinking, wait a second, these look like completely separate cells from the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. Why are they both part of the Bowman's capsule? Well, the Bowman's capsule is a structure sort of like what covers the heart or what covers the lungs. It is often in your lab book, it is illustrated by a balloon, an inflated balloon, imagine an inflated balloon, and you taking your fist and pushing it into the top of an inflated balloon there would be a layer that was touching the skin of your hand, 
And then there would be a second layer that was not touching the skin of your hand. That would be the most external part of the balloon. Well, in that example, the glomerulus is your fist. The balloon is the Bowman's capsule. And the two layers, the one layer that's on your hand, that's the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. And the layer that's not physically touching your hand is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. So yes, in reality, you may point at this when you're studying it with your friends and say that's the Bowman's capsule, but you should pause and say, and this you're gonna you know, push your glasses up and be really detailed and annoying about it, but you're gonna say, now specifically, this is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule, and specifically, this is the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule, which is made of cells called podocytes. So sorry for the details, but when you really, we really do use these details a lot because when you're trying to understand how filtration happens and how things affect the kidney, it does come down to this microscopic anatomy. So that's why we're spending so much time talking about it here. Okay, so then we also have an open space called a lumen. So capsular lumen, that's the open space. So that's literally what that plasma essentially is being filtered into. So remember at the glomerulus, you're doing a bunch of filtration. So it's filtering into an open space called the capsular lumen. The capsular lumen is bound by the podocytes internally or viscerally and um, the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. All right, then our next topic here is the renal tubule itself. So the renal tubule, it seems kind of like a general term and it sort of is, but basically if we go back to this perspective, the renal tubular, tubule is basically what connects the Bowman's capsule to the collecting duct, which is this big vertical duct here. So I won't spend much time talking about the collecting duct in this video, but it is the last term on this section right over here. And so the collecting duct is right there. And so this is part of the renal tubule. Yes, there's more specific name that's probably coming to your mind right now, but this whole pathway, this is all generally speaking called the renal tubule. That's why it's the term that's over the left the furthest. Now we're gonna be more detailed. We're gonna go through all the components of the renal tubule. And they're not too bad, and I know you guys have probably covered this in lecture, but just like the structure of the Bowman's capsule, this is a super important thing to understand. So the three basic breakdowns here are the proximal convoluted tubule, right here, the loop of Henle, which loops down, and then the distal convoluted tubule. So that's a basic breakdown. Proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. Now you can be more detailed about the loop of Henle and talk about its descending limb and its ascending limb. And the way you know when it's descending is because it is on the side of the loop of Henle that is closer to the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus over here. So proximal convoluted tubule connects to the specifically the descending limb of the loop of Henle. And then the ascending limb as you come up, ascending limb of the loop of Henle connects to the distal convoluted tubule. And then that distal convoluted tubule connects to the collecting duct. And so the last thing to talk about is what kind of tissue is actually lay, uh, covering these things. And so I do want you to know these things in parentheses here. And so the proximal convoluted tubule um, is microvilli covered and is simple cuboidal epithelium. And so that is the specific type of tissue, epithelial tissue, so simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. And then the loop of Henle actually has both. So in the thicker limbs of the loop of Henle, you're gonna have simple cuboidal again, simple cuboidal epithelium. And then in the thinner limb, area here, the thin limb isn't much, but if you look at this longer nephron, that whole thin limb is simple squamous epithelium. And then distal convoluted tubule is simple cuboidal epithelium for the most part. And that's pretty much it for this video. I think we've covered it all.